going on boys welcome back to another vid i'm a little bit sick today so you're gonna have to forgive the the sniffling and the, the hoarse voice and all that kind of good stuff but i've got my coffee here i'm sitting down for a nice nice little work session so we're gonna power through it and get some stuff done now i have no idea what the fuck i'm doing a full rebuild and launch in this amount of time you ready look at that that's insane absolutely bonkers mate now i was thinking the other day i woke up i think it was like yesterday morning i was like huh what's a steam demo gonna actually look like for this game you visit the steam page you download a demo and you get this ogre combat demo and you're versing a boss and it's just a boss fight against an ogre is that the game that i want to do am i making a Dark Souls game with a bunch of different boss fights? Like a conquest game? No. So why am I shooting for a demo for that? Now, it was definitely directionally correct insofar as just sitting down, getting some work done and uh, just kind of heading in the right direction. But it's not the most important thing in terms of gameplay that I want to be demoing and showcasing for the actual game. Like it'll basically attract the wrong crowd like, you get a demo for the game, and you think, oh, this is a game about doing the boss fights and stuff, cool. But then you get into the game, and it's like, oh, this is a survival game? We need to approach it from the other side now. This is like the end kind of like boss fight, but now I've actually got to go down and get the start in, which is the first moments of the game. You boot up, you're in a forest, chop down some trees, craft some shit, build a house. Minecraft style. So I'm going to do a bit of a pivot over to that because that's the kind of thing that we need to be demoing in the Steam page when you download the demo, right? There's some problems to solve for the entire base building survival demo, whatever you want to call it. Mainly for the base building side of things, it's how do we interface with base building? Like how do you actually get an interface and like get the building blocks and place down the building blocks? and all that kind of stuff. Which I've tried tackling a bunch of times in the past, but not quite 100% on it still. Uh, and then another massive issue was how do you carry and equip items? Like, how do you pick up a sword? And now, you know, the player's walking with a sword, so you've got a slightly different walk animation. And then you go, okay, well now you drop the sword, so now you're just walking with hands, and that's a slightly different animation. Now you're carrying a bunch of sticks, that's a different animation. Now you're dragging a big heavy log, that's a different animation. I was very attached to the realism. Like the realistic kind of vibes of, it's gotta look good. And I was aiming to solve that with the 3D animation pipeline. That was the solution that I came to, right? But I came to another solution last night laying in bed. And the solution is called, turning the player into a fucking rectangle and just leaving it there. You don't have to render a player. He could just be a rectangle. No 3D rendering needed. He's a rectangle and we just call it a day. The equipment problem, as far as I'm concerned, has just been solved. <laughs> as far as I was thinking for the color, this is the official color code for Zima Blue. There we go. We have it. That's the new look for the player done. All right, now in all seriousness, I do think this is gonna be a good play short term because it solves that equipment issue. And I'm not thinking about that. And now I can focus on making the game really nice. And I kind of did this a little bit with the last prototype I was working on a few months back when I was on my little hiatus. But the mistake I made was not putting the resolution, I guess you could say, like the feedback into stuff that actually matters. So for example, this stick, supposed to be a sword, right? It doesn't cut it as a as feedback for, for, for a sword. It's like, it's, it's a stick and you're bonking someone on the head of it. It just doesn't work. But what we can do is put the minimum necessary amount of, I don't really know what to call it, like feedback, uh, visual aid, I guess, into whatever it is that we need to be doing. So for example, let's just pretend this guy is in a small, tiny blue man. <laughs> With a sword slash, what we could do is basically have a sword hovering out in front of the player and just manually do an animation for it and then rinse and repeat for everything else that needs to be done. But in terms of just the actual player, we can get away with just having a rectangle that just does 
you know, rotations and shit and all that kind of stuff. Because it'll completely avoid the whole issue of even needing to do any 3D animation stuff or getting that to look good. So in essence, my solution to this entire thing really lies in biting the bullet and not being so completely attached to having a realistic looking game, which at the end of the day, games aren't really supposed to be that anyway. It's supposed to be fun. Channeling work into making the player have really smooth animations and really realistic and all this kind of shit is work that could be better spent making the actual gameplay. So that's where I'm at with it at the moment. And it'll be trivial, even if one day I do want to go back down the path of actually doing animations, to just be able to layer that in, if it's necessary, right? But it should be more than easy, getting everything feeling really nice, juicing the shit out of all the play interactions, just as a rectangle. So that's what I'm going to be doing for the time being. Let's go. Alrighty, now that we've got our Zima Blue guy in here, and set, ready to go. Well, there was, there was one thing that I wanted to do the other day. Which is actually what I did in, in Unreal Engine. When he's doing like a little dodge roll here. Right now this is all being done through just changing the velocity. But I want more fine control and consistency over, you know, how fast he moves, how far, all that kind of stuff. So it's best to kind of do it in an animation and just set that out over time. Which I accomplished with timelines in Unreal Engine. But I'm going to figure out a way of doing that manually with my hands. Also, just stop the sprite from changing and get everything fixed because right now a lot of the logic is tied to whether or not the animation finished playing and all that kind of stuff. So it's it's very much coupled to the idea of there being a sprite playing an animation. So now I've just got to figure out how to separate out the animation from the sprites, if that makes sense. So let's get cracking. Alrighty, boys, we are done and dusted. Uh, with the new state thing. I got the manual kind of dashing to work. So that's actually just being done with a timer now. So it's just a two second timer. And this is the dodge roll right here. Now I managed to kind of abstract out the functionality of timers and stuff into this neat little function. And the usage code looks pretty clean like that. You just go if decrement timer. And then this body right here happens when the timer finishes. So then you can go do whatever you want to do when it finishes. As you notice, I've literally been writing this for so long. Such a common pattern. And pulling that out into this feels pretty good. Nice and simple. And you just provide it with a timer. And that ticks down each and every time. If you want to shoot off the timer, you literally just set it equal to whatever you want it to be. So two seconds, and that'll just go for two seconds. And Bob's your auntie. All right, what are we doing now? Solid movement, right. So let's, let's get the jump feeling better. Everybody wave goodbye to Mr. Ogre. Serenity. Peaceful. Alright, ladies and gents, we have with us a nice, clean little scene to work off of. Now, this is very laggy on stream. I still have no idea why that's a thing. Now, this is supposed to be a nice, lovely little lush forest that the player starts in, but we can work with darkness and bones for the time being. Let's add a little bit more character to the, to the sprite as well. Let's add in some rotation stuff. Pitch your and roll. All right, well, that's the that's the new dodge roll animation, boys. Congrats, look how amazing that looks. <laughs> Running's kind of tricky, because it's like, you don't want to make the general movement too slow, but you also don't want to be waiting around for your stamina recharge in order to run. I feel like Breath of the Wild has a nice middle ground for this, where the general base movement is very, very manageable, so you can just walk around everywhere, like walk, right? When you do sprint, it's like a burst of like, psh, you know? Very, uh, very temporary, good in a pinch. So I think that's the kind of vibe I want to go for as well. Because there's nothing worse than just playing the stamina game of like, oh, I gotta wait till my stamina's done, and walking around is so slow. You don't really want to be doing that, you know? It pisses me off. Uh, but for the time being, we don't even need to focus on that. Like, I'm actually gonna put that out into polish because it's not even necessary. So put that in the back burner. It's not a middle ground between walking and running, it's jogging or sprinting. You're either going fast or going super fast. That's all we want. But since you don't need to get anywhere in this demo, really, you're not doing a cross country, don't need to focus on it. All right, me and Frederick are gonna go talk shop and I will be back here tomorrow making some more progress and we'll probably do some tree chopping shit. Thanks for tuning in, boys. Take care. Peace out.